Before Salah and Mane, this right here is the start of three African strikers that dominated the Premier League in the late 2000s. Well, if you ask me, there is really no significant difference in this start. While two of them are genuinely regarded quote and unquote legend, the third one has never been given the right accolade which he deserves. I think we can come to a conclusion here. Yakuba Egbeni is the most underrated African player of all time. And if you watch this video to the end, I stand the chance to defend this claim. Yak started playing when he was 12 on the street of Benin. For everyone who has played street football in Nigeria, boots are not really a necessity. Although for Yak, he couldn't afford it. Growing up, living with your father, mother and sibling, having to join a queue to shower, it's a challenge. I took my challenge and said this is my dream, to play football. And at the end, it pays off. After a failed trial with the Nigerian club, Yak made the decision to join Okomo FC, a team playing in the Nigerian League 2. From there, he signed for Julius Berger in 1997, playing only one season. He got scouted and was signed by an Israeli club, Maccabi Haifa, in the summer of 1998 for a sum of around £300,000. It was in his third season at the club that he began to show off his full potential, scoring week in and week out in the league. You can say it is the Israeli league. Surely there was no real competition. Well, you are wrong. He played eight games in the Champions League that season, scoring seven, including an hat-trick against Olympiacos and a 3 new win against Manchester United. He was called up to represent Nigeria in the 2000 Sydney Olympic. He scored Nigeria's first goal of the tournament and was featured in the win against Host Nation Australia before Nigeria were knocked out of the competition in the quarterfinals. With the Super Eagles field with a lot of big names and superstars who are in their prime, you really need something special to get in that team. Where Yak is special. At age 17, he made his international debut. At 18, he scored his first goal for the Super Eagles, followed with a brace in Nigeria World Cup qualification. Just 19, he was already playing with the people he watched on TV, playing with the likes of Okocha, Sunday Olise, and Kano. The Super Eagle manager was quick to praise him, saying he might be the youngest in the team, but no one trained harder than him. By 19, Yak participated in the African Cup of Nations, scoring the only goal in Nigeria third place win against Mali in February 2002. After a failed move to Derby County in the summer of 2002, Yak was loaned to Portmouth in the winter of 2003. He scored 38 goals in 49 appearances for Maccabi Haifa. Portmouth as then was playing in the championship. But that wouldn't last long. He scored seven goals in the last 14 matches, helping the team to win the championship that season and gain promotion to the Premier League the following season. The loan deal was immediately made permanent by May, costing a sum of four million pounds. Yakubu scored his first Premier League goal in his second match against Manchester City. For the next eight games, he didn't score or assist. He ended the draft with a brace against Nottingham Forest. In the last Premier League game of the season, Yakubu scored 11 goals, making him the sixth top scorer in the league. You see, at the start of the season, Yakubu made a promise to his manager Harry Redknapp. He was going to score 20 goals. Just 19 years old and no experience in the league, Redknapp doubted this and promised 20,000 pounds from his own pocket if he scored 20 goals. By the last day of the season, Yakubu has only scored 15 goals, meaning he needed five goals to meet up with the 20. He scored four goals in that match, although he couldn't meet up with the 20 he promised. This proved his mentality and approach on the pitch. He scored 19 goals in 49 appearances in his first full season with the club. He appeared less the following season as he struggled to keep up with a nail injury. After 92 appearances and 42 goals for Portmouth, he signed for Middlesbrough in the summer of 2005 for a deal of 7.5 million pounds, making him the most expensive Nigeria player. He played all 14 matches as Middlesbrough reached the final of the UEFA Europa League but lost to Sevilla. That season, he scored 19 goals in all competition and by now has proven what a goal machine he is. What followed is another 16 goal in the next season. He signed for Everton in August 2007, taking the number 22, which was his goal-scoring target for the season. Uniting with his international teammates Joseph Yobo and a host of stars like Steven Pena, Tim Kehi, and Mikel Ateta, the team was coached by David Moyes. Just 11 minutes into his debut, he scored against Bolton. He wasted no time to establish himself as the number one short striker. By December, he scored his first hat-trick for Everton, and by the end of the campaign, he scored 21 goals in all competition. By the next season, injury began to set in. As he struggled to keep up with fitness, he scored just 11 goals in about 60 games over the next two seasons. Yak represented Nigeria in four African Cup of Nations, winning third place in 2002, 2004, and 2010. He played an important role in Nigeria qualification to the World Cup in South Africa. The 2010 World Cup is probably the most scary for football fans in Africa. Personally, for me, it was the first time I was watching the World Cup, at least in full memory. There were a lot of expectation and doubt, as it was the first time an African country would be hosting the biggest event in football. From the iconic dance celebration of the first goal to the wide jubilation of the Spanish team, Luis Suarez's madness that caused Africans their first participation in the semi final. Not to forget the Jabulanin ball. You get the gist. Everything was scary, but none come close to this. It's the miss of the tournament! Seriously, we have seen worse means than this by great players and in big games. Why is this a big deal for Nigerians? Well, to gain a perspective, we have to dive into Nigeria's journey in that World Cup. Nigeria was drawn into Group B with Argentina, Greece, and South Korea. Given the credibility and depth of the team, there were a lot of expectation and pressure from the fan. And let's face the fact, you probably can't get an easier group than this in the World Cup. As much as Argentina is guaranteed to top this group, the least the Super Eagle can do is to finish second. After a 1 0 loss to Argentina in the first match, which probably should have been a lot more than that, except for the brilliance of Finchant Nigeria took a high flight into the second game, scoring in the 16 minutes, and were dominating the game. 
If you ask me, Gliss were only chasing Shadow in that game, but there came the first madness. Uh, we, we don't do that here. After the red card, Nigeria lost by 2 goals to 1. For the last game against South Korea, a win would have definitely qualified the Super Eagle to the next stage. Nigeria again scored first before conceding 2 goals and then this. Arguably the greatest miss that I've ever seen in the World Cup. Just 6 minutes later, Yak won a penalty and converted it to put the score on a level term. According to him, I grew into the game and I was certain I was going to get another goal in that match, but I was substituted a few minutes later after scoring the penalty. Given the past record, maybe he could have redeemed himself if given the opportunity to finish the match. I mean, we have seen him score 4 goals in the last match of the season. You see, for me, Nigeria's performance in that World Cup was awful. From the Federation to the coaching staff and the players, nothing was going well. But then, somebody had to take the fall for hit, and that was Yak. That means he summed up the 2010 World Cup for Nigeria, and he was never to play for the Super Eagle again, with a lot of fans demanding for an apology, which I personally feel he doesn't need to. This is football. A miss shouldn't cancel his previous performance for the country, and I think Yak is one of the most passionate players to ever play for the Super Eagle. He scored 21 goals in 58 appearances, making him the third highest scorer for Nigeria. In the following season, he was injured for over a year, ending his days at Everton. After a long spell with the Champions League style Leicester City, Yak made a comeback in the Premier League, which was his last season and surprisingly his best season in the league. Scoring 17 league goals for Blackburn and was third top scorer in the 2011-2012 Premier League season. In his 552 Premier League matches, he scored 95 goals while playing for teams like Portsmouth, Middlesbrough, Everton and Blackburn. He certainly would have done more if he had the opportunity to play for a bigger club. What followed afterward is a move to Chinese league before he made a comeback in England in 2015 and finally retiring from football in 2017. From a young boy on the street of Bini, Yak is a definition of hard work and self-belief, one of the greatest African players of all time. Thank you guys for watching this video once again, it really means a lot to me. Kindly like the video and subscribe to the channel to help me keep making videos like this. I'll see you in the next one.